Hey everybody, it's Tamara from Moogly. Welcome to our YouTube live here. It is February 9th, 2021. And today I'm going to be doing a live video tutorial for the Easter egg granny washcloth, which is a free pattern you'll find on moogliblog.com. Now for this pattern, I'll be using Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie and a US eye hook. This one happens to be by Susan Bates. Now, I teach a lot of classes, you know, free classes for Michaels and things like that, and I do a lot of pre-recorded video tutorials, but we've got some new equipment today for our live, you know, videos like you're seeing right now. So um, today's going to be a little bit of a test of the new equipment as well, so I'm going to ask you to bear with us a little bit. We've got this really cool new arm mount for the, um, here, I'm going to swing it out for just a minute, so you can see it here. It holds my phone with a little light, so we'll have better overhead, um, you know, overhand views of what I'm doing, so I'm really excited about that. And then of course, we've got a little bit of a new camera right here looking at me right now as well. So um, yeah, basically, just to say hi, I was on Facebook here just a few minutes ago. We talked about all the latest happenings, the latest giveaways going on on Moogly, the latest patterns and video tutorials and all that fun stuff, and just answered some general questions. So if you wanna check that out, uh, there are a bunch of links in the description for this video. There will be a link to the written pattern, the hook, the yarn, and today's blog post, which has all the other links on it. One link it doesn't have that I need to af add after this is the link to the sweater I'm wearing, which is the Batwing Lace sweater. So for now, I need to hit refresh here on my YouTube page so I can try and find this video and make sure it's actually live and I'm not just talking into the ether. But yay, it is going, and I've got my volume off, and I can see your chat now. So <laughs> that worked out really well. So hi, Helen, and Miss Jens, and Connie, and Sherry, and Di and Sally and everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a whirl. Let's swing this in and go to the overhand camera. All right, there it is, it worked, yay. <laughs> We've got it. So this is the pattern for the Easter egg granny washcloth. I printed this off just this morning uh, using the print friendly button right on moogliblog.com. So right there you can see that is the URL for the written pattern if you wanna check that out. I will be embedding today's video that we're making right now in today's blog post as well and linking it at the written pattern. So as you can see here, it calls for a US eye hook and Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie is the yarn I used, but you could just as easily use Lily Sugar and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter, or if you didn't want to use it as a washcloth or dishcloth and you want to use it as a coaster or a trivet or whatever, you can choose whatever yarn you want to use. Um, the gauge, you know, I listed a gauge and it's about that size, but I wouldn't worry too much about gauge. Have some fun with it. If you want to try a different weight yarn and a different hook, see what you come up with. It's pretty simple pattern using the granny stitch. So like I say, this is the yarn I'm using today. The originals I used solids, but I thought it would be fun to try it in one of these variegateds. This one's called Popsicle Brights. So I'm going to go ahead and slip our label right off here and find our end of the yarn. There we are. Oh, it's got a big one in there that doesn't want to come out. There we go. Sometimes finding that end is a little tricky. I get a lot of questions about how I pull from the skein, and I like to really follow, you know, the skein type. This sort, where you can see it sort of overlapped there at the ends, you can pull it from the center, but it's not necessarily designed to be pulled from the center. So for these, I like to pull from the outside. It's just a little bit easier for me. There we are. And I find you get less tangles, too. So finally found the end of the yarn. There we are. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start by putting a slip knot right on my hook here. There we are, looks pretty good. You can see that. And then I'm going to chain 13. So like I say, we're using some new equipment today. So if you guys have a comment on that or if you feel like I need more lighting or something, please do let me know. If you feel like it's a little too close, a little too far away, we can make some adjustments and I'd love to get your feedback on how this stuff is working. So, hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I see your hellos. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 10, 11, 12, and 13. All right, so I've made 13 chains. Isn't that yarn pretty? I just love these color changing yarns. They're so much fun to work with. So after that, we're going to skip the chain closest to the hook, single crochet in the next chain, and I like to work into those back humps of the chain. You could work into those under those top two loops if you like to, but I really like working under the back humps. It gives me a nice edge to come back and make my border in. So there we've got our single crochet. Then I'm going to half double crochet 
in the next one. And then you double crochet across until two chains remain. So, ah, thank you, Jen. Sorry, I glanced over and lost my stitch. Thank you so much. Hi, Thea. I agree. I love working into the back humps of the chain. It just gives so much of a nicer finished edge, especially if you aren't making a border. But then when you do go to put your border or edging on, it's almost like you're just working into another stitch. And that's always nice. Lots of pretty color changes in this yarn. I think this one would be so pretty for spring. I know we're in the middle of February now and it's kind of a springy project, but that's kind of the point, right? We want something bright and cheerful at this time. All the holiday decorations are down. The neighborhood is dark at night. <laughs> it would be nice to have some color. Oh, good. Thank you, Crafty Ferret Mama. I'm so glad to read your comment. Thank you. I'm glad to see the angle's good. It's just, like I say, it's a little bit of getting used to it, you know, trying to figure out where my center point is here as we try out our new stuff. So for those who are tuning in late, I am making the Easter Egg Granny Washcloth, which is a free pattern on Moogly. Oh, and here we are, down to those last two chains. There we are. So we have double crocheted across until two chains remain. So I'm going to finish it off with a half double crochet in the next one and a single crochet in the last. Basically just mirroring how we started the beginning of that row. Because of course we want a really symmetrical shape for our Easter egg. So there we go. That's what it should look like at the end of row one. So, oh, Kelly, I'm so glad you're enjoying that pattern too. Thank you. Okay, so this is gonna be the right side of our egg. But again, it just kind of depends on where you put what side the border is on, so don't get too stressed about that. But to begin row two, we're gonna start with a chain of three, and that counts as our first double crochet here and throughout the rest of the pattern. And a note on this, um, if you follow along with a lot of my other patterns or tutorials, you might be familiar with the chainless starting double crochet, which I usually use to start a row of double crochet. But for this pattern, when we come back and make that border, we just single crochet right over that first stitch, so it really doesn't matter. You can just go ahead and make a chain three. Um, it's actually a little bit thinner to work that border around. So for this pattern, I actually prefer the chain three. So after you've made that first double crochet, however you want to make it, then we put two double crochet right in that very first stitch. So really that will count as three stitches in our first stitch here. So there is three. Oh yes, hi from Argentina, hi. Oh, it's in summer there. Oh, I, I could use some of that warmth up here today. It's about three degrees, I think. All right, so after we've got those three made, we skip two stitches, one, two, and then work three double crochet between the posts of the previous stitch and the next stitch. So this is where we really start establishing that granny stitch pattern. So this is the part I think that also confuses people who aren't familiar with the granny stitch. So what we're going to do is skip, let's go do that again. We skip those two stitches, one, two, and then we're going to stitch between the posts of the previous stitch, the one we just skipped, and the next stitch. So that means we just come right down here, right between those posts. Almost as if there was a chain space there. There isn't, but there is a space we can stick our hook. So now we want to put three double crochets right in that space, right between those posts. So if you've ever made a granny square before, it's basically the same thing, but we're just working back and forth in rows. But the trick is we go between those posts. So there's two, you can see that worked right between the posts there. And there is our third one. There we are. Sally, you think it could be a little brighter and lighter over here. Jeff, do you think you'd turn up the umbrella light just a little bit? We'll try it. We'll try and add just a little bit more light here if you think it's a little dark. Also, if you're watching on your phone, make sure your phone brightness is turned up. I know I always have my phone darkness or my phone brightness turned way down. So let's see that. We've turned that light up a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. We'll let that sit for a minute and uh, I know there's a big delay too, so we'll see, we'll let that sit and see how that works out. Okay, so we've got three double crochets between the post of the previous stitch and the next stitch, and then we begin our repeat for this row. We skip three stitches and then put three double crochets between the post of the previous stitch and the next stitch. So again, just setting up that granny stitch. So we skip the next three here, and now we're gonna work right between these two posts. So chunks of three is how I always think of granny stitches and granny squares. Hi, Monica. Oh, you're up in Chicago. You're having probably about the same weather I'm having here in Iowa. So then we skip three more and do it again. Three double crochets there, one, two, 
and three. And then we have done that all the way across until three stitches remain here. One, two, three. So we're going to skip two stitches and work three double crochets in the last stitch. So this is where, again, I think this is where people get a little confused. The granny stitch, we're working between those posts, but to get the shaping on that sides, you know, we can't just crochet into the air here. We have to crochet into that very last stitch. So now we put three double crochets right in the top of that single crochet that was right there. So there's one and two and three. There we are. So that is what it should look like there at the end of row two. So then rows three and four are exactly like the row two we just made. Three double crochets in the first stitch with chain three, then two double crochets in the first stitch, I should say. And then we're going to work back across. So let's do that together. We're going to chain three. And again, we're starting row three here and turn or turn and chain three, however you like to do it. I'm going to pull up some more yarn off my skein. So, oh, so you've got a school day close. We had a late start here. They didn't quite close it, though. All right, so we've got our chain three. So we're going to put two double crochets right in that first stitch, just like we did before. And then, like I say, the instructions are the same, but it's going to look a little bit different. We skip the next two stitches and then work between the posts of the previous and next. So now it's really easy to see where those sets of three double crochets are going to go right into those spaces. There's not a chain space or anything, but there is definitely a space that's easy to see. And that's where we put those sets of three now for the rest of these rows. After that, it's really all just shaping the sides. The stitch in the middle, it's always going to be the same. Three double crochets in each of these until we have to do some, uh, some shaping. So thank you. Oh, good, Sally. I'm so glad that helped. I'm glad to hear that more light was good. Thank you for that feedback. All right, I'm just pulling up some more yarn off my skein here. There we are. Yeah, this is the first time I've used this colorway. This is really pretty. I'm loving the way this is turning out. So let's see here. Got three more in that one. And then we're coming right down here to the end. It looks like we've got one more space, and then there will be three stitches left at the end, which is what we want. So there's one, two, and three. And then skip those last two stitches. And then we put three single, or excuse me, three double crochets right in that last stitch. So that's going to be the top of your chain three. If you're using a chain three for your first double crochet, which like I say, for this pattern, I would just go ahead and use the chain three. It's faster, it's quicker, and it's all going to get covered up by the border. Now, if you wanted to leave the border off, then I might consider using the chainless starting double crochet. But there we are. And that is what it should look like after row three and row four is completely the same. Just what exactly what we did in rows two and three here. You're working between each of those groups. So um, we had a question. What kind of yarn is it? This is Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie. There we are in the Popsicle Brights colorway. And this is definitely a one skein pattern. In fact, I think it only uses 40 yards. So you could get there are 131 yards. So that's what at least three cloths out of each skein. So this is a great one. It's just really fun, um, kind of like the heart cloth. You can, you know, give these as gifts, um, tuck them into other little things. Just a lot of fun pattern here for Easter. So there we are. Now, like I say, four is completely identical. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip four for the sake of time here. We're going to go on to row five. So row, row five starts again with a chain three. Oop. Two, three. Every time I glance away, I drop my hook. There we are. So we've got our chain three and I'll turn. And then we're going to double crochet in the first stitch, but only once. So this is just two stitches here, the chain three and the double crochet in that first stitch. We want to start bringing in the sides. If we kept putting three, you see this is the same angle we used on our heart. It would start sticking out too much. We got to start creating a gentle curve. So we've got the chain three and the double crochet, then skip two stitches and three double crochets between the next in that space there. So between the previous and the next. So like I say, the shaping is really on the sides. The middle of this is always going to be the same. You've got those three double crochets in each of those spaces. Let me get that back on camera. There we are. I have to kind of glance over the camera to see my monitor. So like I say, it's a little bit of a learning curve with our new equipment here. I'm glad you guys have joined me today. 
So, yay, thank you. Um, and Sonia, I'm so glad you're enjoying making the diamond lace scarf. That one is a lot of fun to make. And that was a really fun yarn to use as well. So we've got working our way across the row here. So yeah, I talked a little bit about it and I have seen um, a couple comments here, but I hope you guys are staying warm <laughs> and cool if you're down in Argentina. Um, but uh, yeah, it is about three degrees here. We had a two hour late start. I know some places were canceled altogether. It is just so nice to work with something happy and cheery today. So we're cooking across here. We've got our last little section. So I'm going to go ahead and put those three double crochets right in there. One, two, and three. And then, of course, we want to mirror what we did at the beginning of the row, which means we skip two stitches and just work two double crochets in that last stitch. So... I always, you know, if you have trouble working into the chain, this is a tip I like to share. Um, if you're a newer crocheter, you can really use your hook to get in there and sort of grab that bottom loop. And I'll go ahead and pull it out before you send your hook kind of back through. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it really helps me grab that loop sometimes from the top of the chain three. Because I know getting into that chain three can be really difficult. And I've gotten there with one stitch. It's easier to see where to go right back in there for the second one. So, oh gosh, school closed in Massachusetts too. Yeah, it's been a crazy weather for a year. Alrighty, so there we go. We have the end of row five, and that should have a total of 22 stitches. And of course, that always includes that chain three for this pattern. So row six is going to be chain three and turn. And then we are going to do even a little more shaping here. We're gonna bring those sides in a little bit more. We're going to skip the next stitch. So that means this chain three, since it's considered our first double crochet, means the stitch is worked. So when we skip the next stitch, it means we skip this one right here, and then we go straight into our three double crochets in between those posts on across. So just another way to work this row here on the sides. Now this is again, row six and rows seven and eight will just be repeats of rows five and six. So we have to change the sides every other row there just to kind of maintain our shaping, but that is the basic uh, basic idea. It's just a matter of how you handle those ends. So I will continue working across here. Let me get that back up in the center. All right. And uh, yeah, so we've had a lot of uh, really fun ideas. We were talking about the heart-shaped cloth on the Facebook Live a little bit earlier. Um, very similar, just a heart shaped one rather than an Easter egg shaped one. And one of the ideas I really loved, someone mentioned, was turning it into a bag. And that's one I hadn't thought of before. You could make two of them and absolutely seam sort of the point of the heart up the sides a little bit and put some handles across the top. And I think that would be such a cute little treat bag. So that is an absolutely fantastic idea you can make with that one as well. And then, of course, you could do the same thing with this one. Just leave a little opening at the top, add a couple of cute handles and you would have a really cute cute little gift bag, um, you know, to give treats to your kids, your grandkids, neighbor kids, or each other, your friends, whoever you want to give treats to. So we've worked all the way across here. Now we've just got these two last stitches left. So to mirror the other end, we'll just put uh, one double crochet here right in that very last stitch. So there we are. And there we have it. Now we are at the end of row six. Now, obviously I don't actually made row sixes, row six here, six rows, let me try that again. I have not actually made six rows because we skipped row four, but this is what row six should look like. And then like I say, rows seven and eight are exactly the same as rows five and six. Row nine, same thing as row five again. And bring back up the written pattern here. You can see we're just doing, repeating those rows again. So if we move on to page two, let me pull that down there we're going to be moving on to row 10. So let's go ahead and get that started here. Get back there center. All right, we start again with our chain three. Oop. Every time I glance over at my instructions, I drop that loop. <laughs> and pull up some more yarn from my skein. So thank you, Rose, I'm so glad you like it. All righty, so we're going to skip the next stitch. So again, that chain three counts as our first stitch. So we skip the next stitch and then we are going to put 
two dis- double crochets between the posts of the previous stitch and the next stitch. Now, I should have worked another row five repeat. We just saw that in the instructions before beginning this row. So this one's gonna be a little bit off. So you know what? Joy of live, right? Let's come back and do another row five row together. Let's see, if we come down here, we finished on row six, row seven and eight are the same as five and six again, and then you do a row five again. So let's go ahead and do one more row five before we do move on to row 10, because I'm gonna need to set that up a little bit more. So again, row five is just chain three, double crochet in the first stitch, and then a skip on across. Well, let's see. Yeah, skip two stitches and then three double crochets between the posts of the previous and the next. So we're just gonna continue to work our way across here. So, alrighty. Ah, oh, yes. Um, so yeah. We will just continue making our granny stitches across here. And uh, yeah, if you have if some, any other ideas for this granny cloth or the heart-shaped cloth, please do share them in the chat. Um, like I say, we had a really fantastic idea of turning them into treat bags. Oh, somebody just did. Let's see, Crafty Ferret Mama says, you could also make two and make a pillow for a lower back or neck or as a baby head prop for the car in the car seat. Not gonna speak to the car in the car, the car seat thing because that is full of liabilities. Um, always, you know, follow your car seat manufacturer's instructions. But um, yeah, I love the idea of turning it into a pillow or, you know, anything like that. It'd be a lot of fun. You could also um, fill it with, you know, fill a little pillow with uh, like potpourri or a sachet um, if you want to make it in thread. I think if you mixed up the, uh, you know, your yarn choices or thread choices for this, you could have a lot of fun. So I just want to mirror basically what we had there for our uh, row five. So, okay, now we can move on to row 10. So row 10, we are going to chain three, skip the next stitch. So again, we that one counts as the first stitch, we skip the next one, and then two double crochets now between the posts of the previous two stitches. So with row 10 is where we really start to bring in the top of that egg to get our shaping. And pull up a little bit more yarn here. Okay, so got our chain three. Then we skip the next stitch, two double crochets between the posts of the previous and the next stitch, and then we go back to our usual, three double crochets in each of those spaces. But we're gonna do this until five stitches remain. Before we've been doing it until just two or three stitches remain, but we want to save a little extra room here for our shaping on the other end. So we're getting a little bit of color pooling with this. I wasn't sure since I hadn't used this yarn before, um, especially in this pattern, what it was going to do. And I didn't intentionally start it anywhere interesting, but I think we're getting some really neat color striping effects with this. Let me go ahead and lay that out. Look at that. Yeah, I see that we're getting some really neat stripes right throughout our Easter egg. So that's a lot of fun. I will have to play with that yarn a little bit more. So hi, Rovilla from Florida. You're probably warm enough <laughs> down there. I hope you guys are staying warmer in Florida than we are up here. All right, here we are. We've worked all the way across. We have five stitches left. So what we're going to do now is skip the next three. And then in this very last space here, we will just wanna work two double crochets between the posts. So there's one and two. And then we skip the next stitch and double crochet in that very last stitch. So the top of that chain three. There we are. Ah, yes, when the baby is asleep. I, I tell you what, that always freaked me out when my little ones, their heads would fall over um, when they were sleeping in that car seat. And oh, that angle they can get to, it's just nerve wracking, isn't it? All righty, there we go. So that is what row 10 should look like right there. You can see we've just got our ends treated a little bit differently. But because we had two there and just one on the ends, that's gonna start pulling in gradually here for the shape of our egg. So let's move on to row three. Hi from Illinois, hi Beth. Hi from Iowa, not too far away. Alrighty, so we're going to, we've got our chain three. Now we're going to skip the next two. So that counts as our stitch there. So we skip these two and then two double crochets in this space right here. Again, we're just kind of shrinking our egg here at the top so we get that 
egg shape, that oval with the narrower top that we're all familiar with. And then we go back to our usual until we get those last two sections there. So we work three double crochets between each of these posts until six stitches remain at the end of row 11. So yes, it is warm in Florida. Yes, we could use some of that up here for sure. Three degrees last I checked here in Iowa. But at least it was a little bit sunny. In fact, our live on Facebook this morning, I didn't realize a patch of sun came in the tiny little basement window and was right on my face at the end. But of course, now it's past. <laughs> so, so much of that. We've seen our sun for today down here in the basement. I am just making double crochets here on a cross until we get to those last six stitches, which it looks like we're at now. So let's see here. Yes, we have six stitches left. Those three double crochets there, two more there, and then our chain three on the end. So what we want to do now is skip these three stitches and work two double crochets right in this last section. So there's one and two. And then we skip those two double crochets and double crochet in the very last stitch. So right in the top of that chain three again. There we are. Hook that on up and get that worked off and there we go i really am loving the color pooling effects we're getting with this it's changing a little bit now that we're shaping at the top you can also see how it is pulling in for that egg shape now because we've skipped a few rows it would be quite a bit taller at this point but you can kind of get the idea of the shape here in fact rows 12 through 14 let's go ahead and pull the written pattern back up here this is row 11 that we just made and rows 12 through 14 are exactly the same so we're just going to keep shrinking that right in at the top that brings us down to row 15, which is our very last row before the edging. So this one would naturally, of course, be a bit shorter because we're going to keep shrinking those rows in. So we're going to, um, let's work just a little bit more of these rows 12 through 14, our repeats of row 11. Let's see, we've got our chain three, skip the next two stitches, two double crochets between the posts of the previous and the next. So I really think it's that post work between the posts of the previous and next stitch that really throws people off about the granny stitch pattern. But now that you've seen it, you can see it just means literally stick your hook right between the posts. It doesn't have to be a chain space. It doesn't have to be the top of a stitch. That is what makes crochet so exciting. You can stick that hook just about anywhere. Um, I've invented a couple of stitches in the past that I haven't seen anywhere else before, but I mean, I'm, you can't copyright a stitch, of course, and I wouldn't want to. I think it's just, even though I, as far as I know, I invented them, other people probably thought of them before too and used them and maybe just didn't have a platform where they could share it. Um, I think that there is just so much creativity in crocheters across the board. You can always play with where you stick your hook, play with all these different effects, play with the different stitches and see what you come up with. So, all right, here we are. You can see I actually got a little further than I meant to. We were supposed to stop when we had six stitches left, but I only put two in there, which is what we're supposed to do. And then, of course, we skip those two stitches and double crochet in the last. So that would be our row 12. And we have shrunk down even more. You can see right there, it's getting shorter and shorter. So let's go ahead and do row 13, because I do want to be able to show row 15 just how it works. We've got our chain three and turn. Skip the next two, put two double crochets there, and then skip our next group of three. So we'll continue across with these beautiful sherberty colors. There we are. So while I am just crocheting these double crochets here, oh, you can see we're coming in real quick here. Now that it's getting shorter and shorter, we're already at that side. Um, go ahead and tell me too in the chat what patterns you guys might like to see this spring. I'm always looking for new ideas and I love taking your suggestions. Absolutely love it. Um, it always helps me to know what you're looking for. If there's a pattern I've made that you want to see, you know, a follow up to, a hat that you want a scarf for, or mittens, um, you know, a tablecloth. <laughs> I haven't done any tablecloths, but let's say, you know, if there was something you were just like, gosh, I'd love to see placemats for this or something, please always let me know. Oops, but too many stitches in there. Remember, we just have two double crochets in that first one. And then now we're jumping all the way over here. Let's see. Make sure I've got 
we would have done 11. This would have been 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, just making sure I didn't go too far. When you notice when you get to 14 here, after you make those two double crochets in that space, there's only six double crochets left. So we skip that whole asterisk section. It's always hard to say asterisk. And then we just go straight to two double crochets there. And then one double crochet, of course, right in that very last stitch. So it says there's supposed to be nine stitches in row 14. I think I must have lost my count somewhere because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would have been row 14. I went too far. Made too many of them. There we are. So there's our row 14 with our nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now we're ready for row 15. So what we want to do for row 15 is get our yarn back on the hook here. And then we are going to chain three. One, two, three. Skip the next two stitches. So row 14, we did have one set of three there in the middle. I just want to point that out. That was my error. We skip the next two stitches. We put two double crochets between the posts of the previous stitch and the next stitch. Skip those three stitches. Put two double crochets between the posts of these stitches. And double crochet in the last stitch. So it really is the same pattern. It's like I say, we just didn't have that asterisk section in the middle. There we are. So that brings us down to just one, two, three, four, five, six stitches there in row 15. So you can see what that looks like there for a second. All right, and then we are ready to make the edging. So to make the edging, which is a lot of fun, we're gonna work a mix of single crochets and half double crochets. So we're gonna chain one, single crochet in the very first stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch. So now we're working to the tops of stitches. We're not working in between those posts anymore because this is the edging. Double crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one and two. Then half double crochet in the next stitch. And single crochet in the last one right there. So again, that's gonna be the top of our chain three. There we are. So that creates some of that final shaping right around the top, echoing the little bit more solid shaping there at the bottom. After that, you just single crochet all the way around the remainder of the cloth. And what I like to do is I always like to work two single crochets in the side of each double crochet row. It seems to be the right distribution for me. And that's going to be a little bit different for everybody. If you find your personal stitch width is a little different, then you may want to put three or do two, three, two, three, or even one, two, one, two, depending on how your stitches are working out. It's mainly a matter of getting the edging to lay really nice and flat and to look the way you want it to look. So however you like to do it is awesome. Absolutely, if you're pleased with your finished project, then you're great. I just find that two single crochets in the side of each double crochet works really well. So basically in the side of a single crochet row, I would work one in stitch, whether it's a single crochet or a double crochet, whatever that edging is. In the side of a double crochet row, I usually like to work two, um, treble crochet row three, etc. Half double crochet rows are a little trickier. That's where sometimes I'll work one, then two, and then one, and then two. But you can see I'm almost all the way down here to the bottom of our cloth, and I'm working right around the whole stitch. Sometimes for the edging, it's good to sort of split the stitch, work into the stitch itself, almost, you know, is it? basically go into the side of the stitch with your hook. Um, and then sometimes for patterns like this, I like to just go ahead and go right around that whole stitch that's there on the end. And as I say, that totally covers up those chain threes now. So, you know, if you wanted to put the extra effort into doing the chainless starting double crochet, you could, but I think that since we're crocheting right over it, making regular chain threes there is absolutely fine. So like I say, the rest of this edging is just single crocheting evenly all the way around. We've come now to the bottom of our egg. So since we worked into that bottom loop, we've got these top two loops right there and waiting for us to work our border into. And for whatever reason, I've also found in my experience that when I work into that bottom hump of the chain and then come back and work this border, it creates fewer gaps. For whatever reason, when I have worked into the under the top two loops, the more traditional way of working into the chain, 
and then I come back and make the border, a lot of times I'll find that it's a little bit gappier right there. You can really see where I put the border in. Um, this may just be an effect of my personal tension, but again, I have found that working to that bat bottom hump really, really helps with that. And it really helps uh, even out that tension a little bit and just give a better finished product for me. So it's something to play with uh, for yourself if you want to give it a whirl and see, um, you know, see what works best for you for sure. So I am almost all the way across the bottom here, but I think you've got the idea. There we are. We've got across the bottom. So then I would just jump back up to the side of that row there. Actually, that was the side of the row, wasn't it? Let's turn that over. Sometimes you got to kind of stop and look at your stuff here. So there we are. So this was actually our last stitch. I went a little too far. This was the side of our first one there. So that's where I want to work, working up the side. So wherever that is, and you can crochet right over that end a little bit if you want to, but I do always recommend, especially if it's an item that you're going to be using a lot, um, like a washcloth or a dishcloth, something that's going to, you know, you're going to be picking up and scrubbing with or something like that. I do recommend that you weave in that end with a yarn needle when you're done. It's just going to uh, give you a much more secure finishing for your project. If it's something, you know, that you're going to use like as a doily or something like that, absolutely you can crochet over the ends because that's going to sit in one place and not get handled and moved around too much. But I'm just single crocheting my way on up. Again, if you've got any feedback, I see we've got a thumbs down already. So if you've got any feedback about the camera or the lighting, if something's not working for you, um, part of the reason we're doing this live today is so that... You can give us that feedback because we've got our new equipment out today and I want to make sure it's as good as it can be. Um, and while I'm going ahead and finishing this up, I should mention too, if you follow the link in the description for today's blog post, I will be teaching two free Michaels classes in the month of February 2021 as well. So you might want to check that out too. Alrighty, so I'm just kind of looking at my work here to make sure I'm where I think I am. You can see here I've worked two single crochets in the side of each row. And now I'm right back up here there right there is that first single crochet I made when I began this border so let's go ahead I'm gonna pull up my scissors and needles so I can show you my seamless finishing but you can see even though it's a little bit stunted because we skipped a few rows we've got a really cute little Easter egg here I kind of almost like this one this you know just as a variety go ahead and skip a few of those worked even rows you can have a lot of fun changing the shape of it a little bit too so rather than joining and putting a knot in the end here where you've got your join, one of the things I really like to do is use the seamless finish. So I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving a good six inches or so to weave in. And then rather than pulling this end through or joining with a slip stitch, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up on my hook there and set that aside. And then I will put that end right on my yarn needle like so and then now if this was something if I was uh, let's say if I was going to make a pillow or something like that where I wanted or a bag and I wanted to join two of these together so I needed to have the same exact stitch count around the outside then I would do this in the second stitch so that this stitch replaces this one however we're not doing that for this one it's just going to be a nice edge for our cloth so I'm just going to put my needle right under the top two loops of the very first stitch I made right there Okay. Oh, and good. Thank you for the feedback on the lighting, Thea. That's really helpful. Okay. So I pulled that through. Ooh, and Crafty Ferret Mama. Thank you for the, all the ideas. I love that. All right. So we've pulled that through. Now you can see that loop right there is about as long as the front loop on that stitch right there. So it's time to send that needle right back into the center of the stitch that yarn is coming out of. I'll go ahead and send it down through a couple loops. We're just going to end up weaving this in, so however far you want to go with it. And then when you pull that through, give it a little adjustment here, sort of pull it to the right size. You can see now that looks just like the tops of all the other stitches. And we can weave that end in nice and secure. Of course, I would do a lot more than this, but for the sake of time, we'll just pull that through for now and put that down. And you can see now that's just created a really nice edge there. We don't have a knot. We don't have a lump from the join. It's just a nice, really smooth edge. 
So, yeah, um, Crafty Ferret Mama, thank you so much for the ideas. Um, you'd like to see an ocean-themed octopus, or oh, I just went straight to octopus, ocean-themed coasters and placemats, and, uh, yeah, variety of fish. I tell you what, I've been told on good authority that fish stuff is really in this year, so you are right on trend. So, thank you. Um, awesome. And Karina Hartman would love to see a tutorial for making covers for kitchen appliances. Ooh, that's a fun idea, too. Thank you, Karina. So, let's go ahead and come back to me. Given our new equipment here overall, I don't want to make you guys seasick. So there we go. Now I can move it out of the way. <laughs> All right. So speaking of sea creatures, right? Don't want to make you seasick. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for sitting with me today and helping us test out our new equipment. Um, I hope you'll give the Easter egg dishcloth, washcloth, whatever you want to call it, a try. Um, it's a lot of fun. And definitely check out the other patterns too. Uh, like I say, if you go to the link in the description, or just go to the description, you'll find a link to the written pattern, you'll find a link to the yarn, the hook, and today's blog post where this video will be embedded. And it has all other kinds of great links like this great area rug, which now has right and left-handed video tutorials right here on YouTube. Um, the latest Moogly Crochet Long Square by Polly Plum. Holy cow, look at that gorgeousness. And all the other gorgeous things and giveaways and all the fun stuff happening on Moogly. So do check that out if you can. Um, and I will be adding a link to the sweater as soon as I get back to my computer to add this video as well. This is the Batwing Lace Sweater, and it too has right and left-handed video tutorials right here on the Moogly YouTube channel. So thank you so much, you guys. I really do appreciate it. I'm seeing all your comments. Thank you, thank you. Um, I hope this video tutorial helps you make it. Um, the only downside to live is, of course, I can't do left-handed. I'm not actually left-handed. That's all done with technology behind the scenes. But um, it's been so much fun spending some time with you today. So again, thank you so much, and I will see you soon. Um, don't forget to go check out those free Michaels classes. Not just mine. There's a ton. They do so many free classes. Like, it's got to be just about every day, if not multiple every day. So whatever your craft is, check those out, and I will see you soon. Have a great day, everybody.